Hi everyone, um, Patrick Reed here from the Adamus Principal. Can everyone hear me and see me and actually see my deck uh, with my logo, hopefully? Um, if you just sort of say yes in the chat, that would be great. Um, let's have a look here. Thanks for joining. And um, I'm just going to. Okay. Start off by showing you um, the first. This is uh, the presentation. So it's really um um I just want to talk about what I do at Adamus Principal and and what we do as a company, and then really the main bit of this uh, webinar is to talk about how to find your edge and really capitalize you know one of the first things when i was a prop trader was everyone said find your edge or sharpen your existing edge or you know and i was like what is that so i guess i just wanted to really define it and and tell you what works for me and and everyone has a different edge everyone's capable of doing different things and i just want to kind of you know there are some things sometimes you don't realize you're good at um and for me i'm i know what i did do is i found my weakness before i found my edge and what the so-called um privilege and great thing great thing about markets is you'll find your weakness first right you the markets have this uncanny um knack to sniff out your pain and when 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 they do they'll they'll really um hammer that pain home um, and your job is to survive then out of that pain you'll then re-emerge stronger better then you'll probably find your edge that's that's what i did that's how it worked for me um, so i i want to talk about what works for me and, and an edge it, basically is something that you can do quite well maybe better than most other people um and that can change by the way it's not like you know my edge one of my edges is us macro but that doesn't mean i'm perfect at data or fundamentals or um, anything in the us now i've lived there i know how people tick i know what the splits on gdp i know I expected this equity move with the recent retail sales explosion um, and you know it makes sense to me but um, within the broad market that doesn't make sense because there are some risks that are not being priced in but more of it about, about that later but I guess an edge for me is just finding something that um, through homework and and hard work just to find something that works that gives you a little bit um, of an advantage when you're trading when you're choosing to pull the trigger now that could be you know us macro like myself it could be technical analysis it could be risk management um, my last webinar i did was all about you know vol and risk and stuff like that and I feel that um, without wanting to digress, um, risk management is probably something we teach at Adamus Prince. We're, we're very hot in it. And, you know, I've been very lucky to have very big traders as mentors. Risk management is without doubt the best. Um, it will define you. It will keep you safe. And, uh, you know, many of the good, decent traders, if you're doing any kind of size, risk management is, is, is your best friend. Um, but for me, I think my edge, obviously it's you as macro, but I, I really like confluence. And I've got, I want to talk about confluence is king. And for me, I want to really talk about confluence is king, but also I want to do a case study of euro dollar. Um, the other thing I really like to do, I want to talk about today is sniffing out story like a truffle pig now that is hopefully give you uh 
a quite visual explanation of what I do. Now, when you're when you when you're looking for a story, it all starts with the mood. Now, I'll, I'll sort of explain a bit more about this later. But essentially, without the mood, there is no story. You know, and there are lots of headlines from lots of sources every second of the day. And your job is to find out what matters, what the market's focused on. And here, let me be clear, that might not be important to you, but it's important to the market. And that is your story. Nothing else matters. Okay. So I then want to go really gel and, and talk about in broad sense straightforward techniques of you know macro versus micro um and, and technical versus macro and, and and things like this and essentially you know which is the most important which which is which do you find is i mean i could just tell you what i what works for me and you know i'm fairly um you know, some traders will only trade technical, some will trade macro. I like to use both. I like to use short term and long term. Um, I like to use all kinds of stuff. But essentially, again, like with your edge, whatever works. Um, and then we talk about some of the credible sources from a wide variety. You know, um, so that's that's what the menu is today. Um, Hopefully, it's going to not just answer some questions, but give you more more questions. Um, and you know, I don't know if you catch one LinkedIn, but I do blog pretty much every day. I feel giving back to the markets is important because they've been very kind to me over time, and I've had mentors that have guided me as well. Um, so, who who are we? We are SpotFX traders with over 35 years' experience in hedge funds and banks. We've been there, we've done it, we've got the grey hair. And uh, most of us are uh, sell side. I'm buy side, uh, so I worked in prop desks and hedge funds. And um, you know, I traded as a local, which is a, a term for prop desk trading my own money. I also traded hedge funds money. Um, and the team I head up um, are, you know, spot effects traders. They 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 headed up desks in Goldman Sachs, HSBC, JP Morgan. Credit Swiss, um, all the big, all the big places. Here are some of the places we've worked. Right, um, that company there, TGG, that was TTG. That's Tower Trading. That's my the company I worked at. Um, but as you can see, I I always felt that prop desk trading is one thing. It's brilliant. It's you know, it's your own risk. But it didn't really give me the full picture, and I found that when I was mentored by by bank traders, spot effects traders, um, I was like, "Oh, so you only trade currency?" Well, no, not really. They look at everything, and I know, um, you know, many of the customers and or clients for CMC love equities, and equities I'm all over. I mean, don't think what I'm going to say is, you know, only for FX, only for currencies. It, you can apply the exact same for any asset. Um, and equities are basically running the show right now. I mean, you look at where what's happening. Um, there's lots of sort of subplots with uh, the rise and rise of retail traders with things like uh, you know apps, the retail friendly apps, which uh, are challenging and, and pose problems in themselves. But essentially, equities are moving, and, and, and currencies are following. You know, equities are, you know, currencies by a large extent are the passenger of equity risk on. So this is really important. Um, it's very, very uh, significant. Um, okay, what do we do? Well, we teach and trade ourselves. We provide one-to-one -one mentorship. Um, we see traders into prop desk, but we also uh, financially back you. If you don't want to make the jump into prop desk, we'll, we'll, we'll financially back you for, um, you know, CMC or broke your choice but you know we love you guys at cmc so you know that would be the natural fit for us um and we we provide expertise by asset or region some of that is spot effects equities as i said yield curves swaps inflation emerging markets um g10 
penalty crosses and we're really hot on, on risk management. Um, we, we do feel that some of our team, uh, some of them have PhDs, some of them not, some of them, all of them share um, the common curiosity for markets. Um, they share the passion and most of us, most of the team I, I, I sort of head up, have over 35 years experience. Um, and you know, the best experience, I'm not knocking MBAs, but the best experience you can have is on the desk. Uh, and we, we do have a lot of experience in years. Um, so let's get to it, how to find an edge. Now, I want to apologize if you see any spelling mistakes, because I was writing it furiously yesterday and, and this morning. Um, so when I when I get passionate and passionate and uh, creative, uh, you know, because I love markets, I, I bash away and, uh, I, you know, sometimes the spelling is not that great, but you'll get the idea. And, uh, you know, the first thing I want to say is, is find your edge, find what it is and practice, try different things, right? But the first thing is be curious, just say, okay, why is the market move from here to there? Try and play Sherlock Holmes, Find the reason why. Then when you've found the reason why, make a note of it. I've got this pad, I'm old school, right? I've got this pad, I write it down because for me, I love writing notes. And for me, I'm just gonna show you some of the notes I write. So look, all highlighted, all, this is, you know, I was taught this by, guys that ran the desk of Colin Sachs and JP Morgan. And for me, you know, I'm not saying you only have to do that, but for me it works. Because when I write something down, I remember it. And I'm constantly writing notes because I'm, you know, I'm not young, but it's, it really works. So that's an edge. That is part of my edge because it works for me. So find something, practice, explore everything, and you might find trading uh the open after asia the open in london you might find that it's your edge you might say look you look at your track record you go look okay i'm making more money from seven to nine a.m you might say look i've stopped losing money from one to two because you're on a webinar with me no you, from one to two because it's 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 the lunchtime lull so instead of like upping your trading at lunchtime, you slowed your trading there, you're upping your trading in the morning, you, your ratio of win, win and loss is improved. So your, your, your p and improved at month on month, right? So that is an edge. Um, so all I'm going to say, don't get too hung up about, oh, it's like, you know, I've got to get special information, I've got to be super, clever like a NASA scientist. Don't 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 worry about that. All, all it, an edge is it's just something that you can do really well. Um, and something that that might involve lots of different things. Um, so I want to use I want to just really talk about what I use and, and something that I really love um, is confluence. And I called it, I mean I have a few things. I mean I like US macro. I'm pretty good at risk management and checking my notes, apologies. But I do feel that confluence, I mean confluence in the purest sense, is king. And because when I started trading, I woke up and I had a market view. I was like, like everyone's selling dollar, everyone's buying dips and equities, for example. Um, but I would somehow get it in my head that I had a market view and I would then try and look for charts, indicators, commentary to support my view and I would lose money, right? Because it's wrong. I don't do that today or I don't do it as much. And the reason is, is because I shouldn't be biased. When I wake up, and, and this is something that confluence is a key part of, you need to have a blank sheet of paper. You need to let the market form your view. Let, listen, listen, really, really listen. 
and look, read it, read the market. You know, the market is telling you, the market is desperately trying to tell you whatever the asset, look at look at equity, so look at the S&P, look at the Dow. Those two, those two bad boys, right, are trying desperately what to tell you, right? Now look at retail sales and look at the relationship with that in the US economic picture and look at the market's view of that economic picture. And already you're starting to form a bias. And whether you believe it or not, the market's telling you that. It's not your belief, okay? So this is important. And what I love to do is use confluence. And what that means is I get lots of bits of information from everywhere. And I bring it all together. I sort it all out and I go, look, I've got this, I've got that, I've got that source, I've got that source, which is a bit far out. I've got that source, which is really slow and moving, like stuff out the FT, which is very thorough. I've got Bloomberg, which is a bit faster, but that Bloomberg has a certain thing that does really well. I've got Wall Street Journal app, which is great. And at the moment, Wall Street Journal is delivering a certain certain thing about inflation, which I really rate because it's another thing I'm really into. Um, uh, I've got Zero Hedge, which gives me another thing. All of these uh, are basically news outlets, um, and they they don't cost much. Um, Zero Hedge is free. Um, Bloomberg, I mean, it's, it's minimal amount. So I, I recommend you know you can get free trials. Just sign up. You know, sign up for the free trial. Have a look, um, and, and I use these as some of my um, um, areas of confluence. But one of the things I would have really honed down on today is I I particularly like data and technicals, but now macro is in my box too of confluence, um, and I want to really focus on one bit of that confluence, which is timeframes, and timeframes in cross assets is really good, but I just want to keep it really simple today and talk about one asset. Now, I'm going to use Euro dollar, but it doesn't matter. You can use S&P, you can use Dow Jones. Excuse me, let's get some water. You can use S&P, you can use Dow Jones, um, and I want to really look at time frames. So here's a case study, it's euro dollar, right? And I want you, if you have a notepad and pen, what I'd like you to do is to write down some numbers, some levels, basically. Um, this is the first chart. Now, it's just an asset and, you know, I've drawn some lines on it, right? Let's keep it really simple. And then the lines I've drawn are fibs, trend line, um, and obviously this was taken on the 20th of May, but the thing I want to, for the purposes of confluence in timeframes, the thing I want to like really highlight is, let's just say we are at a level of importance or significance. So what I want to do, which is what I do, which is what I'm going to do right now, is write down the level that I think is quite important on a time frame. Now, the time frame we're using here is the four hour, which is you can see on the top left hand corner. And the and the level I'm gonna put down is 109.63. So there's that, right? So that's on the four hourly. Now we've jumped to the daily. Now obviously that chart looks different to that. And that says, I would write down why 109.63 is important. Now it's important because it's 38.2% Fibonacci. All right, it's close to the upper Bollinger Band. It's not upper Bollinger Bands for me on real levels, but it is important because it is a previous high and we're sort of snuggling up towards that level. Now obviously we've broken up and we've got to, you know, we've broke, well, close to 114, 30, 30, 40 area. 
but this was way before that. So this to me as a chart tells me that it might break up, right? And lo and behold, it did. But what I want to know is let's take a bigger time frame back. Now this is the daily, obviously. We had a, a trend channel, a trend line going lower, 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 a big spike, a big drop, big vol in Q1 in March. Then we were consolidated here. But look, we've got this triangle, which is interesting, isn't it? Have a look at that level there. It's 109.47. 109.47. Now, 109.63 and 109.47, you know, 15, 20 pips difference. In, in effects terms, in currency terms, that's not, it, it's significant enough. You need to just write it down, right? So don't forget the timing, the, the daily charts um, much got bigger and four hourly, but I've written it down anyway. So really those two, we've got two numbers, 109.63 and 109.47. Let's look, at, let's go even further back. This is the weekly snapshot, right? As they've all taken on the same day, 20th of May. Now, you can put on any indicator you want, but for me, I like more Bollinger Bands. Now, interestingly, look at the level of the mid Bollinger Band, it's 109.46. So then I've got two levels that are pretty much spot on, and look, it has, Defended it here. This is the, the weekly chart. Okay. And I would just say that around 109.45 to 109.65, that kind of area is a place where you found a lot of sellers, right? So that means I would expect price to slow down there. It would be what is known as sticky. Guess what? It was sticky. And when you get confluence in time frames and it is an area of stickiness, what happens is when that breaks, that stickiness is relevant on the way up, but it's also relevant on the way down too. That means that resistance becomes support. You know this. It's like 101 basics, yeah? So I've got those levels in mind now. And, you know, what's actually happened is we broke that level. And usually when a big, big level breaks properly and closes on the daily above it, then I push my risk to be buying into that dip. And what I've found is because you've got a lot of consolidation here, and even on the daily, you've got a lot of, you know, this is like a tightly wound up coil, like a spring. And, you know, markets become balanced, balanced, and then contract, contract, and then they spring out and become trends. That, that's market cycles. So this, to me, obviously, the trend went bang, bang, then we started, and then we went bang up. Yeah, so the, the, car, the, the constant mini cycles and, and broader cycles are always happening in markets. Um, you get that in S&P, you get in Dow Jones, you get in the CAC, you, you know, Euro stocks, all, all assets really, currencies, everything. So these numbers I've written down, and I feel that this area of sticky, the, the 20 pip kind of stickiness is relevant. And it's something that I would probably like to call a line in the sand. Now, let's just say I bought a break or I bought that dip. Where would be a good place to take profit? Right, well, for me, a level is 111.88. So I've got that level here, which is the 61.8% on the fifth. Now, on the four hourly, that's a 61, but it's around 111.61, which is here, okay. there. 20 pip difference, okay. Well, when it starts to get 111.60, which it did, you might want to take profit. Now, 
on the daily, I rather like 111.88. For me, it works. Not saying it works for everyone, but for me, I quite like it. And the reason I like it is because of support, resistance. It broke, failed, off. Yeah. Obviously, this broke, obviously. It doesn't mean the level still doesn't work to pivot, right? So I would look to take some, some profit off around 111.88. So that level on the daily, we've used confidence not only finding a level to buy or sell, having that line in the sand, but we're about to use confluence again on looking at targets. Because look at here. This is the level that we have the line in the sand. But let's look at the monthly. So that 109.45 to 65 we've highlighted doesn't really count on the monthly. But look, look on the mid Bollinger band on the monthly. It's 111.88 or close to. So that is really relevant on target. So if that is the case on the monthly, you know it's going to be quite sticky up there. So if you just really go easy on yourself and try and look, if nothing else, if what you take from this webinar is try and go easy on yourself. You don't have to be smart or clever, just common sense. And look at just go really simple and just start by using confluence as time frames. And then maybe use different assets in different time frames. Because you know the market is all you need really. It's the, prop, it's the price, right? I mean, obviously macro moves markets, technicals define risks. That's the old saying, and it's absolutely true. I'm not I'm not saying that, but essentially the market is the price. It's never wrong. It is the it is the price. It, it, it is the right price, and all you can do is just interpret what the market is trying to tell you through that price representation and i would just say when you're doing your when you're finding your edge right just practice first of all do the, the context of time frames like i've done um, and just sort of use that as a starting point and then build it you know build it up to like g10 currencies assets like you know bonds equities you know yield curves all that stuff but then look at emerging market um, assets as well, um, and then build it from there. So you've got all your time frames in all your currencies, start with euro dollar, keep it really simple, and then build it up. And then all of a sudden, you've got this whole menu of amazing confluence. You've really learned it. Then you can put your macro, then you can put positioning, then you can put flows, then you can add monetary policy but all that comes later what i suggest you do is in the beginning if you're just trying to create this edge just stick with the basics first and then build it that way so now um the other thing i like to do in markets and you know i'm no way perfect but what i do is work and it's made me a lot of money over the years, is sniff out the story like a truffle pin. Um, if you imagine, I think I said it on the last webinar, I can't remember, but if you imagine you're like, you know, Sherlock Holmes or, or a truffle pin and you're looking for that prized asset, which is the most, you know, but truffles are basically worth more than gold in their weight, right? So you want to find the truffle. And to find that truffle, that truffle is the story. It's the new story. Now, how do you know if the story is the story that you want to find? Because there, every single day, I mean, I, work, I wake up in the morning, I wake up quite early, and I find there's loads of things going on in the markets, and I would say 5% of that is relevant to today like this morning in, in say London session, maybe 10 percent. But all of the other stuff I need to know as well, because that's a future narrative or it's, a, it's an old narrative that might reemerge. So I need to always keep things cooking, but essentially, I'm gonna give you an example of what 
what I think the market's focused on. And the, the, the real easy thing, which, you know, it's so simple, you can miss it. The real easy thing to do is to look at the move. It start, everything starts with the move, okay? And you wake up, if you're, if you're in London, I know many of you are, if you're in London, you wake up, you look at what Asia did. What moved in Asia? Why? Then you find out the why. You, find, you found out the what, the move, now the why. Why did it move? That's your story. That is your only story. And the reason it's your story is because it's the market story. Okay. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, um, North Korea bombed uh, an agency that was near to or in the DMZ. Um, I want to ask, ask yourself if that moved markets. Um, I, I think it's, you know, sadly some people's lives got lost in it. it it's a, you know, a, a, a very big story, but it didn't move markets. I mean, dollar yen came off a tiny bit, a couple of the yen crosses, equities not bothered really in the grand scheme of things. Compare that to US retail sales. Right, and, and the Dow Jones, right, up a thousand points. The day after, up another three, four hundred. So, do you see how the move started the story? The move dictates the story, not the story dictates the move. Yeah, um, this is a key point. This is part of the edge that I have. I mean, I have other things I'm quite good at. Um, but these two things, like the confluence is king and sniffing out that story like a truffle pig. I would just say these two things are, are really fundamental to, to becoming, you know, to really finding your edge. Now, just to, to come back about the first bit, you look at your time frames on, on your different you know, four hourly, daily, monthly, weekly, on say one asset, I've picked euro dollar, I'll just go back quickly. But I do, you know, that was the start. I do, I do emphasize, there's your euro dollar, four hour. I do emphasize that the other thing to remember is you can use this on any asset. Um, you know, if you want, um, you know, you can use it on, on equities, you can use it on bonds and, and you know, anything really. But we just, because, you know, I'm, I'm a currency guy, we've really used euro dollar as, as the example. Um, so just really practice on that and then try to build it up, but then stick your story in. Does that story fit with the way you're reading the market on the technicals. Is it priced in? Is it not? Um, now, I'll give you a little bit of an example as well, okay? Some stories I think the market's ignoring, um, and I just want to really talk about the V-shaped recovery narrative. Now, we, you all know, um, love it or loathe it or, or whatever. Um, personally, I think it's, it's optimistic. Um, now, what has put doubt in that story is the retail sales explosion in the US, right? That doesn't mean I'm going around the back face and going, look, you know, I'm going to be selling the house on S&P. Doesn't mean that. It, what it means is I reevaluate my bias and I look at all, everything I've looked at that I've just shown you, I look again. I look at the risk plays, I look at dollar, where, the, where is the dollar at the moment, you know? There's a, a funny narrative going on today that dollar's firm and risk on, which is not which is unusual. Usually dollar gets weaker and people buy assets and assets get on, uh, lifted up and I risk on. But that aside, I feel that there's a lot of risk out there with the COVID-19 second phase. Um, 20 states in the US are, uh, there's a re-emergence, Arizona, Texas, um, South Africa, South America, um, obviously districts in Beijing, um, all of this stuff, you know, Iran, 
all of this stuff, I think equities are ignoring, right? Um, and there's fair, I have various reasons for that. It's probably for another another day. Um, but I don't ignore it, and, and ignore it at your peril. So if I if I want to sell risk, if I want to start fading this equity strength, then I, I might be in a minority. And you know, as a trader, you've got to really look at yourself and, and be humble enough to say that I'm wrong, even though you're right in what you feel you're right. The market's right, not not you. The market's always right. So you know. What does that mean? It means you take a step back. You know, if you're if you if you don't agree with the market, you take a step back and you go, you know what, staying on the sidelines on this. Um, then when the market, as I said, it all starts with the move, when the market starts to top out, and you use your technicals with all your confluences and all your time frames, you chose your dollar, but you, you look at the SP or the Dow. And when the market is trying to tell you that, oh, hold on a minute, love the V-shaped narrative, beautiful, retail sales in the US exploding, let's look at homes today, I think it is, see what happens. But then when that euphoric kind of risk on starts to taper out and peter out, then the market will tell you. Then when that happens, then maybe consider selling some of the risk maybe the the COVID-19 will stories will start to play in and that is your edge you know that in itself is just looking when to step back when to push your risk forward um, and for me as a trader you know for a few years now what I found not trading is the best trade sometimes realizing that I'm in a minority, so I'm not going to fight it. So I, you know, cutting my risk, cutting my trades, not trading at all is is, is often you know the the best. Um, but I'll say this finally and, and surely, it is the move. It starts with the move. Then you get you find out why that is your story. So happy hunting for those truffles. Um, so I just want to give you the next bit of the move after you've found your 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 move. So let's just say, you know, say a move happens in London like now, we're kicking into opening to cash in, in you know in the US, the Dow or up to two thirty ish. Um, let's talk about you've got your move now. Now you need to find the source. So what I would say is use a variety of sources, but remember that each source plays favorite. It's like, you know, when you're at school and you have like the class teacher's pet or the class favorite, it's exactly the same with, with, with sources for news. Um, Bloomberg, CNBC, Reuters, uh, Zero Hedge, or X Live from FX, so that's more retail, it's a great, great source. These are just some of the many sources that are out there. Um, you know, there, there, there are quite a few. Um, I would just say three, read them all, you have to. Um, you know, there's 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 so-called desk talk, which you know, me I have I'm privileged that I have a lot of friends who are big traders, so I you know I'm on the phone to them. But essentially all of this is you know if it's a story that counts the market's priced it um or or not but if you think it does count maybe you're slightly ahead of the curve but you know through experience you'll realize what to kind of put aside you know um for example like u.s trade deficits not bothered you know um u.s swaps pricing in negative interest rates bothered right that's that's significant um the big thing is because we're in a zero or zero interest rate global um uh global narrative let's just say one central bank decides to raise interest rates now 
you've got a story. What do you think that will do to markets? Ask yourself, what do you think? If Donald Trump um, had a little chat with Jay Powell over a cappuccino and a, and a, and a, and a McDonald's burger, right? And he says, yeah, come on, Jay Powell, let's, let's try and raise interest rates. Which he won't. But let's just say, I'm, I'm joking here, by the way, it's not going to happen. And I'm not indicating that it might happen. But let's just say that would to happen. What do you think the markets would do? How much, how much do you think the S&P would move lower? How much do you think the dollar would move? Wow. Why? Because the market is not expecting that. Um, so I would just say sometimes you'll get a little thing out of Bloomberg. Bloomberg are great, they're quick. Um, as I mentioned before, Bloomberg are quick, FT a bit slower, but FT are really, really thorough. And they're great on big pieces. CNBC, I've had problems with CNBC because you know things like Mad Money, they've been dying, buying the ditch for a long time, but they've actually got a lot better. Reuters are a little bit dry, but they're absolutely mustard. Really great source, beautiful. Um, Zero Hedge, quite sensational. Kind of um, in the know. They love their good head, good luck, conspiracy theories. Uh, Forex Live are a great retail. Some of their ex institutional, they're great retail, a one stop shop for a lot of stuff. Even CMC, I love CMC, you know, absolutely can't, 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 uh, you know, not them at all, brilliant. Um, and, you know, if you want a, a great, quick um, uh, insight to equity, CMC are, are brilliant. Um, and so all of them together, what I'm saying is look at them all, all of them together, and then you'll get a feel that, like at the moment, I'm really liking Wall Street Journal. It's not listed here, but I really like, I really love Wall Street Journal, just because they're talking about inflation. Now, inflation, for example, is a future narrative. And where everyone's like, what do you mean, Patrick, inflation, that's not going to happen. Well, you say that. But the amount of stimulus, and let's just face it, you know, we cut, in the US, we cut stimulus from 75 billion a day to 4 billion. And now, you know, the Fed is saying, okay, we're gonna buy corporate bonds, not just ETFs, not new news, but markets lifted on that. Donald Trump mulling over a 1 trillion package, markets lifted on that. So there you go. The move happened with that kind of story. That tells you a lot. Write it down. Remember it. Look at all of these sources. Some play favourites, some don't. So just bear that in mind when you're, you know, finding that story, when you're sniffing around that story. Um, nothing lasts forever. Stories, really weird stories change. Um, I'm always looking for the next story. I'm always kind of seven or eight moves ahead. I say that I'm trying to like make out I'm a big, you know, very clever chess player. I'm not, but anyone can do this. I'm not special. So what I just say is you always think about, hmm, okay, tensions in Hong Kong, tensions in China which, um, and, and Taiwan. What about, you know, tensions with say India and China? You know, some people died recently. What about tensions with Japan and China? Not really a story right now, might be later on. These are things that you have to ask yourself. Um, look at the surprise index on data. Have we bottomed out? You know, there will be questions on the stimulus and the package. You know, the old, the, the, the important thing that underlines everything is the ability to. Uh, find a vaccine for COVID-19 to, to find, you know, to cap the spread again. I mean, you know, the second wave, you know, what action is going to be put in place until we find that vaccine? How quick will we find that? That's your, you know, that's, that's what is known as a more reliable science, i.e. Like physics, biology. Um, the unreliable science is, is economics, right? So that's just, Something to bear in mind. So um, just to kind of really tie it up, because um, I want to leave a little bit of time for Q&A at the end of the webinar. 
Um, micro, macro, or what? Um, everything counts. It's all important, all time frames, all sources. You are basically, you've got this roadmap, you've got, and, and lay it all out on the table. Sometimes when I was, uh, you know, a, young, a younger trader, I used to write post-its on my trading. I had my trial screens, and I used to write post-its everywhere, like, you know, different things, lay all that, and then look at the evidence. You know, a bit like a detective, you know. <laughs> I imagine myself as a uh, modern-day Sherlock Holmes, which is quite funny, actually, but that's what you need to do. You know, you look at the evidence. So it all matters. Um, so just finally, before you pull the trigger, remember, they all matter. And, you know, finding your edge is really up to you. Practice makes perfect. Eventually, you will get an edge. Um, as I said, macro technicals are really important. Um, that's my edge. I, I quite like that. Um, before you find your edge, if you're anything like me, you make a lot of mistakes in the beginning, which you will be, you will do if, if you're, you're, a, you're a retail trader, remember the markets will find your weak spot before you find your edge. Your job is just to survive because eventually the markets will change and you'll, you'll stop doing the same mistake or you'll, 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 you'll be better at your mistakes. You'll limit your losses on your mistakes and you'll amplify your wins. Thank you. Um, we've got about 13 minutes left for Q&A. Um, just to really find, to wrap this up, we, we are a kind of trying to disrupt things in education at Adams Principle. We mentor and place traders and financially back them um, if you do our mentorship. So if you want to learn more, um, you know, we have a lot of experience in markets, both in banks and hedge funds. Hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, I'm Patrick Rees, Adamus Principal. Here's my email. I blog a lot, right? I blog a lot on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, I'm into markets. No, <laughs> no way. Yeah, of course. And I encourage, I want everyone to be a trader. I want to encourage you, ask me questions. You, you know, send me a connection request. Um, if you have anything you want me to say more of or less of or, or whatever, just, just post it in the chat or, or just hit me up on LinkedIn. But um, pretty much that is it for me. Um, and so here's my, I'm going to leave it here. And hopefully if I just turn on the chat function somewhere here. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm going to probably hand it back to to uh, Lauren. And thank you, thanks for listening. Any questions? Just hit me up on LinkedIn, email me, or, or post them in the chat. Just try.